Hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are blessed. Well, we're doing this series right now that we've called Seven Days of Overcoming Your Giants. Seven Days of Overcoming Your Giants. Through my life, I've met some very powerful people. I've met some very wealthy people. I've met some very famous people. I've also met some people that are very poor. I've also met some people that are very weak. And I've also met some people that no one would even know who they are. But what I've discovered is that no matter who people are, who they are, is that what's common to all of us is that there's giants in every one of our lives. And what do I mean by that? Giants we might say or express as being the human weakness that all of us have. All of us live with the history that we've had. All of us live with the families and the locations and the countries and the nations that we've come from. All of us live with circumstances around us where that speak to us. All of us live with people that have spoken things to us. Many of us speak with disappointments in our lives, areas in our lives where we uh, have fallen short. All of us live with those things and all of those things, if we allow them speak to us and they tell us things that are not true and we live out of those things in a, that have occurred and happened, sometimes within our control, sometimes not, and we live out of those and they deplete who we are. And so if we ask the question today, are you completely happy? If we ask the question today, are you every, everything that you believe that you're meant to be in this, this point in life, almost no person I've met says, yes, I'm everything I was meant to be. I've never heard anybody say that. I constantly hear people living with disappointment. So often we can, uh, we can look at the rich and the famous and we can think to ourselves, well, they've got it all together, haven't they? They've got it all together. Uh, but the truth is, if you get close to the rich and the famous, they're no different than anybody else. They have in their own lives, in their own manner, marriages, in their own work, in their own minds, in their own bodies, in their own experience, the same kind of issues that everybody else has along the way. And yet those things rob us of life. Well, in the Bible, there's a wonderful story about overcoming our giants. And whilst it tells a story, there's also a metaphor in this story that you and I can use today. Uh, see, see, David is this young man who's a, who's a shepherd boy. And one day he goes down to where a battle is taking place between two opposing armies, the army of Israel and the Philistines. And from the Philistines, this giant soldier steps out named Goliath and he taunts the people of Israel to send out their best fighter and they'll fight. And whoever wins, rather than everybody fighting, there'd be mass death, then we'll just say that army is the winner of the battle. And for 40 days, Goliath comes out, but no one, no one comes forth from the army of Israel because what they're doing is they're worried. They're worried about, you know, am I strong enough? Am I good enough? Um, they're looking for their own hero. They're worried about their own self-identity. And then young David comes along and he hears this taunting going along, going about by the big, uh, by big Goliath. And he notices that no one from the people of Israel steps forth. And he says, why is no one going? Because David does something. David has a completely different mindset to the army of Israel. The army of Israel is looking to themselves, but David recognises who they are and who he is. He recognises that they are God's chosen people. And he comes and he comes and he stops and he says, well, if we're chosen, God's chosen people and God is with us and in us, then God will look after us and God will defeat this battle in our lives. Doesn't mean we don't have to fight, but God will defeat this battle. In our life, and we see this a couple of times, and 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 if you and if we can grasp this, it's so helpful to where we are today. You might be someone who goes to church all the time. You might be someone who believes. You might be someone who doesn't believe at all, and this is just as true for you as well. David, when asked by the king, um, by the king, how can you go down to fight? You're just a boy against an experienced warrior. David says this in verse 37 uh, of 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse. Uh, uh, 37, the Lord who saved me from the poor of the lion and from the poor of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. Look at it again. The Lord who saved me from the poor of the lion and from the poor of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. What David is, what David is saying is, it's not me that's going to fight. 
It's God who's going to fight. The Lord, I am the Lord's. And so God will do this within me. God will make it happen. David does this thing that's so fundamentally important. He doesn't look to himself. He looks to truth. He looks to the truth. What's the truth? And the truth is that God is with him. If we have a look at, at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, we, we read, we read uh, when he's just about to, to fight with Goliath, Dave, he's walked onto the battlefield and it says, uh, but David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've defied. See what David's doing is saying, this is who I am. The very day, the Lord, this very day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I'll give you the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to, uh, to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth. So that all Israel may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear for the law, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. David says something that we all need to do with our lives. David stops and says, who am I? What is the truth? Our circumstances, our life, our past, our history speaks. Our world speaks. It calls us names. It reminds us when we're lying in bed in the silence of the night about who we truly are. It, it's when we're in the car alone and there's no one with us, it reminds us who we are. Our past is reminded to us when we go through struggle and difficulty or we face a new opportunity or a new circumstance in our life. And our past and our history, our circumstance, sometimes in our control and sometimes not, not speaks to us and it calls us names. It calls us failure. It calls us someone who pulled up short. It says to us, it calls us names about our family and how they let us down. It tells us, it calls us names such as mistake. It calls us names saying you can't. It calls us names in so many different ways that deplete and rob and make us less than who we can be and less than who God calls us to be. And it's not how we're meant to live. It's not how we're meant to live. We're meant to live in the truth. And what we all need to do, no matter whether we are 70, 80 or 100 years old, or whether we are a child or in our teen years, we have to speak the truth to us. Who is the person that God called you to be? What is the desires and the dreams in your heart? Yes, life might have knocked you around. Yes, you might have made some significant mistakes in your life that you can't go back and change. But your past, your mistakes, what people say to you, when they say to you, you're not tall enough, beautiful enough, strong enough, muscly enough, you know, big busted enough, whatever it is that the, tr the world says to you, it's not the truth. The truth is you are a son and a daughter of God. You are made by God for greatness, for beauty. You are made by God to contribute what you are called to contribute to planet Earth. And maybe someone will see what you contribute and maybe no one will see what you contribute. But you have worth you, because of the truth of who you are. And we need to come before God and sometimes we need to ask God's forgiveness for believing the voices. And sometimes we ask, need to ask God that he would heal us for believing the voices. If we jump all the way into John's Gospel, chapter 14, it says this, Jesus says, Jesus, who is God, says this. He said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me again. I'm the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to me uh, except, th except um, through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. What, what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, remember... That when you come to me, when you give your life to me, when you fall into my arms, I'm going to speak truth to you. I'm going to speak to you about who you truly are. And for many of us today, just as David said, this is who I am. I'm a son. I, I'm, I'm, I'm God's chosen. I, I am part of the army of Israel. God is with us. God will do this. 
We need to look at our lives and we need to say, God will do this. It doesn't matter what battle you're facing today. It doesn't matter what mistake you've made today. You know, your name is not failed marriage. Your name is not poor parent. Your name is not failure in work. Your name is not come up short in whatever area you want to. Your name is not bad at sport. Your name is not uh, poor looking or good looking. Your name is that you are loved by God. That is the truth, the truth. And if we concentrate on what the world or our past, our mistakes or the things done to us or the things out of our control say to us, we live less. But when we turn our head toward God and we say, Jesus, tell us the truth about me, it lifts us. It lifts us and we can live in freedom and we can live with the ability to get up and to go on more powerful from where we are. There's so much I want to say as we do this series. It's, I believe that there are so many of you that this is just the truth for. I meet so many people and this is the truth for. It's the truth. Speak the truth because in the truth, you will find strength. Strength to be that man, to be that woman that God has called you to be. Loving Father, I thank you today that you, that you require us to remember the truth. Let us remember the truth of who we are, of the little boy and the little girl, the truth of who we are, that, that person of desire and hope, not the person of mistakes, not the person where people have done things wrong to us, not when there's things out of our control, but allow us to remember the truth that we are a son, a daughter of God, and that you are in our lives. And in these next days, as we talk about how do we step forward, how do we break the words that hold us down, the thoughts that hold us down, open our hearts to live fresh, to live anew, and to overcome those giants that hold us back from being the person that you declared we should be. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.